Welcome to Tales of Blue, a Q and A. This afternoon, I'm joined by one of the quickest and the most underrated City players of the early nineties. Playing just over 100 games for City, Terry Phelan. Terry, welcome. How are you doing? Uh, yeah, thank you for having me all the way from Bangalore in India. Yes, uh, great to see all the wonderful shirts at the back there. Obviously, I've been following you now a, a few weeks or a, or a month or so. So yeah, it's absolutely brilliant to be on here and I, you know. Uh, answering them questions, what have have come in from all them city punters? Well, I'll start us off, Terry. What what was a young Terry Feeling's earliest football memory, memory growing up? Ah, well, obviously it's like everyone's. It's you know it's playing on the streets, isn't it? It's watching Cup final day uh, in that in that May, that lovely summer, watching them games, watching World Cup games. Uh, but it's, you know, obviously grown up in. Uh, uh, Salford, I'll call it Salford because obviously it's a different city from Manchester, you know, uh, you know, two cathedrals there. So, yeah, growing up in Salford, on the streets, kicking about, just like probably every uh, boy my age, you know, just getting out there, kicking about, watching games. And we talk about city shirts there. I, I, my first shirt was a Manchester City one, the old blue one with the badge right in the middle. Uh, and the next door neighbour, we were talking about, you know, getting rid of stuff. The next door neighbours, I think you might have it there. Have you got it there? Probably about that. that wow, well, that's it. That's it, yes. And I remember that I met yes, yes. that one. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. But uh, the cuffs, the cuffs was a bit frayed, you know, and, 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 and I wore that. No wonder I was quick because I used to get chased up and down the street all the time by Manchester United fans. <laughs> but no, it was great. Around 1984, Terry, Caesar joined the Leeds United youth team set up. Was there ever a chance of you going to the City youth team around that time? Well, yes, I actually had uh, oh, uh, Ken, Ken Barnes, I think it was Peter Barnes' uh, father, was the chief scout at Manchester City, and he came up to the, the house then. Uh, and I was 12, 13 years of age, and he, I went for a little trial at Manchester City. I did very well. Playing against uh, lads two years older than me, did very well. And he come, we put a contract on the table, said, look, there's a four-year contract, two years as an apprenticeship and two years as a professional. We'd like you to sign it and a lump sum of money. Uh, but obviously then Manchester City was buying big-name players back in the day. They were spending money back then, you know, millions millions of pounds. Trevor Francis, I think it was uh, Steve Daly, I think he'd come for a, a, a million pounds. So... Uh, and it was in the, the old first division. And I said to myself, look, Leeds United, uh, the, you know, the older players are coming of age now, got a good chance there. So stepped down second division and I'll always hit that, uh, them heights. So, yeah, I just went to, to Leeds in the end. You know, I, I would have loved to have gone to Man City, but I thought my chances of really getting in the team may have been limited. The spells with Leeds, Swansea and Wimbledon before you eventually returned home to Manchester and signed for City in 92. Yes. Had a move, yes. back, to, had a move back to Manchester being something you thought of early in your career? Like what, what uh, Manchester? Not, not really. I always thought I was going to stay in London, to tell you the truth. You know, uh, obviously Wimbledon was very successful and what, what they did, winning the FA Cup and, you know, uh, <clears throat> playing in the old first division. It, very successful uh, little team, little family, great unit. Uh, but then when you, you, you spend five years there, you think, right, then you've got to, you know, your, your ambitions are bigger and better. You know, I was an international and all, uh, Irish international, so I thought, listen, let's see what's out there. And there was a whole load of clubs, obviously. Uh, Manchester City coming out at the last minute, Peter Reid. Uh, there was Tottenham Hotspurs, Celtic, Everton, uh, Manchester United. Barcelona, Ajax. I was going to say, Terry, it was actually it was linked with Barcelona around the time, wasn't there? So how did yeah, it, it, initially it, City it, come in, get involved? Yeah, I, I think it was it was it was just the money, you know. It was just uh, all them clubs I just mentioned there really wanted to pay 1.5 million, and obviously Sam Herman, then uh, the Wimbledon owner, he wanted 2.5 million, which I thought was a little bit high to say the truth. I thought I thought it was extraordinary. You know, I didn't. Uh, <clears throat> You know, for the full-back, uh, I think that was way too high, you know, and I could have probably went to Barcelona. But uh, obviously, Peter Reid come in the last minute, Crystal Palace come in the last minute, and also, I think Stevie Coppel was there. But uh, Reedy, he put a blueprint down in front of me, he said, this is what we want to do, this is where we're going. 
he, he brought Keith Curl in there, uh, an ex-teammate uh, of mine at Wimbledon, and, and, and my ex-roommate uh, and all, who's fantastic. And, you know, now Quinn was there. Uh, so, absolutely brilliant. David White was on the right-hand side. He, he got Rick Holden hugging the left-hand side. And then he had some great young players coming through and all. Gary Flickcroft was coming there. He had Fitzroy Simpson there and all. Uh, little Dave, uh, uh, Michael Sheridan was in there. So, you know, he, 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 was, he, was, he was gathering a good team. You know, and he, he turned around and said, look, we, we're, we're going to try and get Matt Letitia in there, Ian Wright in there. We're going to try and build a team to challenge for the, uh, the league. So, Peter so I, ended up, I, ended up, I ended up signing for Manchester City on the, the, the dotted line. It wasn't about going back to Manchester. It was about going to a, a club which is supported as a, a young boy. Peter Reid said in his actual programme notes after you signed, he's on cloud nine, it won't take him long to settle. So how did it feel when you actually joined? Oh, the oh, City listen, I, I, get, I get goose pimples now. I remember when I was at Leeds, I remember playing for Leeds uh, uh, reserve side against the City's reserve side. And I think we got absolutely uh, smashed all over then. I was only probably 15 years of age. And then I used to go and watch Leeds first team when he went down to uh, uh, the old main road. You know, I couldn't really say too much. I couldn't stand up and cheer and that. But uh, it, it, it didn't take me long. I wasn't the fittest, but I remember my first game and running out in, in front of the kip acts and I thought, wow, you know, this is completely different. Don't forget, I'd already played at Main Road with, uh, with Wimbledon anyway, so I knew what the atmosphere was like. And I knew when I went there, I said to myself, look, these, these people sat in the stands uh, and on the seats and, and standing up, these have paid that money. It's no one else who's paid the money. So I've got to make sure every game I go in there, I give 110%. And I'm exciting with them and all. And that's what I just try to do. I try to work hard, number one, and be exciting when I got the ball, number two. I was going to say, that you, you, you touched on it. Your debut was 26th of August, 92. 3-1 win over Norwich, it was, under the main road lights. Um, yeah. What do you remember about your, your debut performance, Terry? Uh, well, it went that quick. I know there was a lot of uh, euphoria about it. You know, the, the money was too much, and will he settle in? And that. don't forget, I was already an international. I'd already played five years <laughs> for Wimbledon, and I played for Leeds, so it was nothing new. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, you look at Leeds; the crowds was near enough the same in the old second division. So that wasn't that wasn't a bother. I just think the passion from the, the, the city fans and the willingness, you know, to win a trophy. I mean, that's what drove me the willingness to try and win a trophy there. And, you know, it really never happened. And then one thing led to another. I absolutely loved it in, at, at Main Road. I loved the fans. And they'll always be me out because it was uh, my home club. Well, from a supporter's point of view, you seemed to hit the ground running quickly and soon become a fan's favourite. How did you feel you fitted in at the squad? And was you affected at all when you came in, Terry, by the high, the high transfer fee? No. You equaled no. the record at the time, didn't it? But yeah, yeah. No, I never really. I just, I, you know what? It was just money what somebody paid for. And all I was had to do was go out, prove that uh, I could do the job and, and, and play. And I mean, them city supporters would see me play anyway. You know, if they would have seen me at Main Road playing for Wimbledon on a number of occasions or at Plough Lane, they would have known what I was all about. So I just had to go in there. You know, obviously there was one or two left backs in there, and I never had no no fear. It, for me, it was a, a great challenge. It was a, a, a wonderful challenge just to fly up and down that them wings, and you know, get people off the seats and get people standing up, and you know, it, it was just it was just so much of a great passion for me just to you know show that you know we we little full backs could be nippy, we could be tigerish, and we could get about the pitch. And I loved running anyway, so it didn't bother me. Yeah, it certainly showed. But can you recall hearing the City fans first sing your song? What did you think of it? Or do you oh, remember well, it? I mean, oh, no, I, of course I remember it. You always remember them songs, don't you? I mean, don't forget when you, when you come from a, a club like Wimbledon where the crowds are not as big and then you go to, you know, a stadium where it's sold in 45,000 week in and week out and, you know, you've got the kip acts who are, you know, you're right in front of them, they're singing your, your name and that. It, 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 I mean, the emotions and the the adrenaline, what pumps through you, you know, when fans are singing your name at the top of the voice and they've come there, you know, that, it's that Saturday, they've come there, they're willing the team on, you know, they're willing the players on and all you have to do is, as a player 
It's just giving something back, showing that you're dedicated and honest. And, and that's why they sing your name. Uh, and, you know, and it'll always stick with me that, yeah. I'll always remember that uh, we've got that loving feeling, that Terry feeling. The Righteous Brothers. Yeah, always, Springs, Springs are yeah, yeah, brilliant. I remember somebody saying, you oh, know, did, did it get on your nerves? No, I used to absolutely love it. I used to absolutely love it. It's the 9th of January, Terry, 1993. Your first City goal, 4-2 win at Chelsea. Do you remember, remember that call, call that day? I don't, I don't even remember it, to tell you the truth. <laughs> I can't, I can't remember it. Go on, talk, 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 talk. Oh, 9th of January, wow. 93. We wore the third white strip. Mike Sharon. Oh, wow. Oh, I can't. I can't remember. I, I, I remember. Is it the the, the strip was uh, stripes, wasn't it? If you were oh, a stri- right. if you were a striker, you'd remembered the first goal. That's for sure. Yeah, your first goal. Oh no, gee whiz! Now you test. Now you test me. That <laughs> now you test me. So I, I you know, I, I didn't score many goals, and it's amazing. No. That, uh, I can't why, remember any of that's them. That's why I included the question. I thought it was a bouncer. No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no no! Honestly, honestly, sorry about that. Whoever, oh, whoever thrown that one in, but I can't, I can't, I can't, re- I can't remember that far. But I can't even remember my second name half the time. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of blues there, including myself, were convinced our name was on the FA Cup that season, and yes. even more so yes. when Sharon put us one up in the quarter final against Spurs. How did the players feel regarding the competition as it progressed that season? Were you- we 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 was <laughs> we was very confident. Uh, we was very very win within it. We, you know, we knew what we needed to do. And we, 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 we didn't talk about it a lot. But we said, you know, this could be our year. All we have to do is keep the good form going, what we're, what, what's been told to us and what's been given to us on the training part. You know, we had uh, Tony Book there. Obviously, Reedy was there. Uh, Big Sam Ellis was there. And it, you know, and, and it was great. I remember Dennis Stewart used to come all, always into the changing room. And, and, and just pat me on the shoulder and say, go out there, we man, show them what it's all about. And we, we started off amazingly against uh, Tottenham. Oh. They couldn't live with us. We was on, we was, we was on fire. Uh, Sheridan got us in front and we're thinking, here we go now. You know, we're, we're cruising this game. We're going at half time. We come out and it's a completely different city team. Yeah. You know, a completely different city team. I think uh, a couple of bad mistakes, which happened. But... Uh, you know, and then it started, it, it, you know, we, the game started uh, leaving us kind of thing. And we're thinking, and I, all I was just thinking about was the supporters. More than anything, the, the myself was the supporters. Come on, let's try and get this game back. You know, let's get it back for the supporters. Let's try and get that trophy on, in, in the cabinet for them. They've been waiting an awful long time. And could that be it? And obviously, one thing to, led to another thing, uh, led to another thing, sorry. And it, it did materialise, you know. Oh. We our, hey, our hearts was broken after that. Our hearts was broken after that. And, yeah, it wasn't you know, meant to it, be. It, was a, it wasn't meant to be, no. You know, well, obviously you, the best. You must, team. The, you must remember the goal in that one. Oh well, I do remember well, it, but yeah. I wouldn't like to remember no, it. But, uh, to tell the truth, it, it was. I, I know a lot of people ask me what was I thinking and what actually was going through my mind. I tell you what I was thinking: frustration. Sadness, unhappiness, uh, uh, you know, a lot of things was going through my mind. And I think uh, when uh, Tony Colton just rolled the ball out to me, I said, right, I- I'm really pissed off here and I'm just going to have a go. I'm just going to get the ball. It's been willing to happen because I used to always try and do it, you know, run with the ball, run at pace uh, and with me agility. And it just opened up. And a big member, Big Now Quinn, just shoving a couple of Tottenham players uh, to the side. And it, it just opened up, and I thought, right now I've got to the end, and what we're going to do with it? And, and I just slotted it in the back of the back of the net. And for me, really, it was just, you know, thanking the fans for being there on that day and just giving them something to cheer about. Uh, but then the cheering over escalated, and uh, you know, it was—I think it was just sadness from the, the supporters, yeah. really, because they they knew then that we we had a good chance of winning it that year. Well, 38 appearances in that first season and a fifth place finish for City. How pleased were you with your first season at the club? I thought it was, I thought it was absolutely brilliant. You know, mm. I thought we absolutely did so well. Uh, and I, I hope the City fans was pleased with us. And that's why we, when you talk about trophies, you know, people were just looking at us and thinking, right, go on and build on it now the next year. You know, we've got a good team. We've got young players in. David White was flying. Niall Quinn, Keith Curl, myself. Uh, Andy Hill, 
Ian Brightwell, you know, you had uh, I think Stevie Lomas was coming into it, Gary Flickrock. I mean, you look at them players yeah. who was coming in, homegrown players, and you're thinking to yourself, wow, we've got a good younger side. Yeah, I'm not forgetting people. Squad, it seemed. Yeah, Wasn't not forgetting good. people like Steve McMahon and all the, the old general who was, yeah. who was sat in there. So, you know, we had, we had a, a nucleus of youth and older guys in there, yeah. But there were lots, great, of media, great lots of media talking the summer of big name players coming in, but nothing really materialised. I think it was only a Dutch fella came in, Alphonse Gronendijk. I don't expect you to remember him. Was, were you aware yeah. of the upheaval that was about to unfold on the club following sort of John Maddock came well, in? I don't know if you remember that name, and Reedy really went just a I few do, games into the season. I, I do. Well, well, that was really sad for me because, I, you know, we mentioned earlier the clubs I could have gone to, and I've gone to Manchester City because I was sold. Uh, the blueprint of reading. I liked what he was doing. Obviously, it was a club I supported as a young boy. I wanted to be back there. I wanted to play in front of the big crowds. In. I was I was very sad to tell you the truth. And a lot of other players was because we seen something uh, which was going to get built and uh, it didn't materialise. And then when Reedy goes, I'm thinking to myself, oh, what, 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 what's going on here? Uh, I didn't really know what was going on. You know, it, you know your dreams uh, feel a little bit shattered. But at the end of the day, you're a professional, you're getting paid, you have to go out and you have to play. And that's what, that's what we did. Uh, whatever was going up on upstairs, we couldn't control. If it's out of your uh, control, it's no use worrying about. We had to control what we could do on the, on, on the football field. So Brian Horton was swiftly appointed. And uh, it was a stop-start season, really, which never really got going. And it was heading for a relegation dog fight, really. And, Brian Horton brought in a few new faces around a March dead time. Likes of Uwe Ross, yeah. Paul Walsh, Peter Beagle. They had an impact. But yeah. What are your members of that second <laughs> season, Terry? Is it unfolded? Uh, it, it was like you just did in Ellen. Yeah, it was stop start. We, we could never really get going, you know, individual performances. It was never really uh, uh, team performances, you know. I think we was we were still uh, sad from Peter Reid going to tell you the truth. I think it was a massive, big hangover. <laughs> Massive big hangover from that. And, and then you see the, the club coming in and, you know, you've got top players in there. No disrespect to any managers, but you're thinking, hang on a minute, we've got good players in there. You know, we, why, we want a big name manager to come in, you know, uh, you know and, and shake it up a little bit. And fair dues to Brian. I just don't think he got the dress room uh, uh, the way he wanted it. You know, it wasn't his fault. Obviously, he had stuff going on over his head and all. Uh, but yeah, uh, and we, we, we couldn't see light at the end of the tunnel. But at the end of the day, you've still got to go out there and play for the fans. Uh, honestly, it's not about playing for yourself. You've got to go out there and play for the fans. And you've got to, you've got to put that blue shirt on and pull your socks up, roll your sleeves up. And you've, got to, you've got to put the effort in. And that's what we try to do. 24 95 would see Brian Orton's full season. We play some great football, great wins over Spurs, 5 2. Yeah. Road, but again, it was a bit yeah. of inconsistency with cost us and two disappointing quarter final cup exits at Palace and Newcastle mm. probably hit the players yeah. and the fans just as hard. Uh, was, yeah. was there rumours throughout that season, Terry, that Horton would be replaced at the end of it because he quite he was he was in the job? I, and, I think there was, yeah, I think there was always there was always rumours, obviously, which way the club was going to go. Uh, Rumours about who was going to take over, which chairman was going to take over, you know, uh, who was going to take over as manager. And you're thinking to yourself, let, let, as players, you sat in the dressing room, let's just sort it out. You know, let them sort it out upstairs. Let's get it uh, put to bed. Let's get on with it. Let's try and get some uh, normality uh, uh, within the units. Uh, and let's bring a peace and calm uh, to the football club. And it just didn't seem like that. It just seemed one change after another change. Rumours here, rumours there. And as a player, you can never settle then because you never know whether you're going to be in the club, whether you're going to be out of the club. Uh, and you're always trying to impress uh, uh, the managers who do come in. And, you know, it's, you know it's, it was always a bit nerve-wracking, nerve to tell you the truth. Alan Ball eventually came in, which he becomes your third City manager. And just 10 games later into that season... You were gone. Wasn't the move away on the cards? Did you sense the direction the club were now heading? I didn't have a clue to tell you the truth. I, 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 I you know, my, my, my uh, ambition was to start, start Manchester City for uh, you know the rest of my career. That, that's what, that's what I was looking forward to doing. But uh, you know, obviously, uh, the owner uh, brought uh, 
Mr. Mr. Alan Ball in, and uh, you know, another shock, really. You know, you, you can't really, you know, piece the jigsaw together which way it's going. But I, I mean, I remember me just going into the, uh, I remember just going into the changing room one day, and walking down the corridor, and uh, I, he just turned around and says, uh, "Can you come into the office?" I said, "Yeah." He went, "We're selling you." I went, sorry, I went to selling you. I said, well, what do you mean you're selling me? I said, you know, I've got a couple of more years left on my contract, actually two or three more years left on my contract. Why, why are you selling me? Well, you know, I, I've been playing well. You know, I, I've done the stuff what you've asked me to do. Uh, I've had no problem with uh, the fans. Uh, the fans seem to have taken to me. I don't really want to go. He said, well, we, we've took an offer of a million for you and we'd, uh, you know, we'd like you to go uh, to Chelsea. I, I was really gutted, you know, because uh, uh, I was probably one of the first ones out. I, I, was, I, was, I was really gutted. And, uh, you know, even to this day, I, I just don't know why it happened. So how would you look back and if you had to just sum up your time at City and your relationship with the fan, Terry? How would you do that? Oh, oh I mean, you know, I, I can go anywhere in the world and I'll always bump into a City fan and it'll always turn around and say, you know, thank you for your... your you know, your great attitude, your hard work, you know, you know, we look at fullbacks this day and age and, and I believe in my own ability that I was just as good as them now. You know, you look at them now, uh, you know, you look at Robinson getting forward for Liverpool, Alexander getting forward for Liverpool. You know, I was doing that all yeah. my life, you know, so to talk about the modern fullbacks <laughs> this day and age, I was doing it all my life, so it was nothing new to me, but you know, for the City fans, they'll always, and we always say this as ex-players, but they'll always be there. They'll always be in my heart. You know, I go back to Manchester every now and again. I come back there. You know, a lot of my friends are Man United fans. A lot of my friends are Man City fans. So, I'll always, they'll always be there in the back of my mind. They'll always be there in my heart, the City fans, yeah? I, I, you know, I, I can honestly say, I can, on one hand, I, oh, how many bad games he had for Manchester City. There wasn't, there wasn't probably many. No, definitely not. But, um, so, if I could ask you a couple of favourites, Terry. I'll yeah, see yeah. As least as you yeah. like or as much. So, favourite, first one, City match. What what springs to mind? Favourite City match you played in? Oh, I, I think we... Ooh, I, I tell you the favourite City match. We we played that up at Everton, uh, at Goodison Park. And uh, we, we were just so confident and we was cruising. And... I just ended up uh, pelting it down the wing. The ball come into me. I think it would come off uh, from uh, Steve McMahon. Mike Sheridan was running there and I clipped the ball in. So I think it was Mike Sheridan or Dave White just clipped it over Neville Southall. And we ended up winning that game. And that, we knew then that, hang on a minute, we've, we, we, you know, yeah. we've, got some, uh, we've got some players here, we've got some talent. So it was that Everton game away, uh, which we ended up w winning that game. So that was a great game. I enjoyed yeah. that game. This will be a quick answer. Favourite City goal? <laughs> well, uh, that one that one was a, a, a nice goal. Obviously, uh, me, me, me run, that's, that's got to be the one, hasn't it? Obviously, uh, just for the emotions and the way it happened, it'll always be there and it gets replayed wherever I go, I suppose. Yeah, so that would be my favourite one. Favourite City teammate? Favourite City? Teammate. Oh, favourite City teammate. Oh, I had, I had a few. <laughs> we had a few of them. Obviously, Keith Curl. Obviously, I was with him at uh, uh, Wimbledon. I used to enjoy uh, the company of uh, Ian Bob Brightwell. He, he was always, he was always there. And always funny, David White. But it, obviously, it was Curly because we, we grew up together at Wimbledon. We had some great uh, times at Wimbledon. So Keith Curl would be in there for me. Uh, a funny moment, Harry. Humorous moment. Something that happened. It can be in a game, training, an away day. Oh yeah, I mean, it, it, it was, it was, it was really. We was, uh, we was out training one day, freezing cold day. You know, like you used to wear the the undershorts, like these tight undershorts under your shorts, and the shorts was really small then. You know, so really, really come out with his cagoule on, and he had these like. Uh, 
like cross on, but he didn't have his real shorts on over him. And he come, he, he come jogging out and, um, and he didn't have his shorts on under him. We was killing ourselves laughing and said, Gaff, you know, you've got to put shorts on if you can't keep running out there because the tackle's running all over the place. Get some shorts on. I said, ah, no, I'm not doing it. You know, yeah. reading them little legs and yeah. I can imagine, you can imagine the sight, couldn't you? No, so that was no, no you couldn't. That was <laughs> no, you wouldn't want to imagine that sight, would you? Um, uh, favourite no, away ground to play at? Favourite away ground to play at was I was always Anfield uh, growing up uh, as a boy and you, you see them great Liverpool teams and, and the cop and you, you look at the kip acts and you look at the cop and then you look at the uh, strip for them but I think going to Liverpool was always uh, was always fun you know you know you watch them as a young boy winning uh, all the trophies they won and the European Cups and that and the great teams had it was always uh, going to the Anfield and, and playing in front of that cop. What's the, you have, do you have an opponent you enjoyed facing? So you knew before the game today, so yeah, I'm going to be all right today. I, I, I enjoyed playing against anybody and, and everybody, Me, It was always a challenge and a battle. You know, the, the, the quicker, the faster, the more aggressive. It, it, it brought the best out of me. Uh, obviously, you know... <clears throat> You had your moments, but uh, Alan Shearer, I used to always like playing against Alan Shearer because I knew he was strong, aggressive. And if he did come out into them wide areas, you know, you, you know you'd be in a battle and a tussle. So I think for me, Big Al was always a, a handful. Or, or even someone like Les Ferdinand was always a handful. But, you know, you enjoy playing against them players. That's where, that's where you earn, your, you know, you, you earn your, your money playing against them. I've got a few questions from the... People on the Facebook page, Terry. So yeah. The first one's from Anthony Nipper. You were part of the world documentary, documented crazy gang at Wimbledon. Who from that dressing room would have fitted into the city dressing room and why? Oh, wow. Who was from that? I think Dennis Wise. Dennis Wise would have uh, been fantastic for uh, Manchester City. Wisey, notulent, horrible on the field. You know, but I, I've never seen a better crosser of the ball in my life. And what a wonderful fella off the field. So, for me, Dennis Wise would have fitted into a, a Man City a midfield. He could have played in that midfield role or he could have played out in a uh, right wing. I think he would have probably slotted into the midfield role because uh, obviously you had David White out there and all. This is from Jordan Byron. Who was the toughest opponent you'd ever faced? There was a couple of them, wasn't there, you know? Oof, if, if we turn around, like we just mentioned, Alan Shearer there, if he did float out there. Uh, wingers, however, was just as quick as them. I, I was okay. I, was, I wasn't too bothered. Uh, but I would, I would probably say I remember playing against Mark Hughes and, uh, on a number of occasions. And for me, he, he was just solid, you know? He was hard to knock off the ball. He was quick. You know, if the ball went in the area, you know, he'd get his body across there. He, he was a real, he was a real handful, was Mark used. Because don't forget them days, there the, the, was no dropping off. You know, you had four players against you all the time. And it was like man for man. There was no people dropping off and collecting the ball and, you know, just one playing up front there. So Mark Hughes was a, a solid player. Good. This is from Callum McKenna. Favourite sissy shirt design worn? Your time as a favorite, favorite shirt, city shirt design. Oh, that you, that you would have worn oh, during your time. Oh well, I, you know what? I I I, I actually love the first city shirt I I I, I put on. Uh, it's this one. When I signed, that's I the one. Yeah, I I love that one because it was nice and tight. It was a little bit tighter. Whereas the other ones were the one behind you there. And oh, just over your right shoulder. It went a lot uh, baggier and bigger then, didn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, but that one you've got on, I, I love wearing that one you've got on. Yeah, that was, that was my favourite one. Uh, it's from Andrew Tebb. Who was quicker, Curl or Phelan? Wolf, I mean, uh, you know, uh, listen, you look at Curly. Curly was lightning. Curly was quick off the pace. Uh, I was more of an endurance runner. You know, I could run all day long, quick, but run all day long. And I used to wear people out. Curly was. Curly was the tad quicker than me, yeah. Curly was quick. I tell you, another couple of people who was quick, Richard Edgill was like lightning. I've never seen anybody quicker than him. Ian Bob Brightwell, I know. David White was a uh, bit... I think Curly just, uh, Curly just had the, the head on me there. I used to have all races with him, even at Wimbledon and all, and it was always that touch and go. 
So Curly, I'll give it to Curly. Well done, Keith. Right, that's where Bit I long, long, Hey, long, if he's watching long distance running, Curly, then it was uh, Terry Phelan. <laughs> right, that's what I've said. Who's the most influential City player you played with? Uh, I'd say uh, to Tony, Tony Colton was great behind us, you know, rock solid uh, keeper. Uh, I'm saying I'm, I'm I'm saying a goalkeeper here, and you, you might think it sounds a little bit stupid, but you know TC was absolutely fantastic. You know of what he did previously and all, and and it was a shame that he didn't get more England caps. It was a real shame because he and you know what he was fantastic with his feet and all, but you know then in front of you, obviously when you had Steve McMahon and what he'd done for Liverpool, you know everything just rubbed off off off. Stevie onto you, you know, his attitude, you know, his determination. So I think them two players, but TC was absolutely brilliant to play in front of. Great stuff. So what's Terry feeling of 2020 up to? Well, I'm like everybody else, locked in my apartment <laughs> yeah. in Bangalore in India. Uh, keep yourself super fit as usual. I just did two sessions today, one in the morning, one uh, in the evening. Uh, obviously, I'm a technical director for... <clears throat> South United Football Club, we're just building a, a lovely big academy venue down the road, which is ongoing at this moment, a little bit slow. I've been in India now for the past uh, five years. I was in Kerala, down in Kerala for 4.5 years with the Kerala Blasters uh, as their technical director and doing numerous programs and, and projects. Uh, I do a lot of uh, TV stuff for, for Sony Sports in Mumbai. So yeah, I've been, this is my second stint in India now, uh, five years. Uh, my first stint, I was down in Goa. Uh, I think that was around about uh, 2010 to 2012. Ended up going back to England for a couple of years, more education. And then ended up coming back out to India. So, yeah, I've been here for five years now and doing the coach education, uh, trying to kick the ball about a little bit. Uh, but obviously, with this lockdown, things are going to be a little bit slow. But you still got to keep po positive. you still got to keep upbeat. Terry, it's been an absolute pleasure. I appreciate your time and your questions. Your Lovely. Memories. It was brilliant. It was great thank you very you much. Sure you played like we would want to if we was in it. It's been a pleasure, mate. Oh, thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you very much.